Okay, so seat belts. So I've got a couple of these receivers. These are the original Triumph ones, fit to the Mark IIs, uh, Mark II Stags, with a seat belt warning um, feature, which is a, a micro switch inside. Which is the problem with these is the seat belt warning feature isn't working. So uh, these are riveted together. Uh, most people wouldn't bother trying to repair them. I guess they'd either replace them or put in more modern seat belts, which is quite often the case. But I wanted to keep these because they fit really nicely in the um, uh, they fit really nicely in the car and uh, uh, you know fit into the original carpeted binnacle um, so I'm having my seat belts refurbished at the moment and that'll be new reels and everything uh, and and new tongue so this is an old tongue and as you can see it clips in and it should then uh, disconnect the micro switch inside to switch off the seat belt warning light which is on the dash so um, this one doesn't work, uh, so the easy way to test that is I've got a test meter here, just set the continuity, so it'll beep, uh, a couple of test leads connected to it. So at the moment, I get a beep if it's uh, if I've got a closed circuit. This should beep when I connect it now. And as you can see, it's nothing. I can try putting the seatbelt in a couple of times. Do some things up, but it's just not working. So, at the moment, the micro switch isn't connecting inside or disconnecting or whichever way around. It's not touching at the moment, which is the key thing. Um, so, I, I've just done the other one, and it was a relatively straightforward job. All you need to do this is a two and a half mil drill to drill out the top of the rivet heads and some screws. Now, I've got uh, some twenty mil long, two and a half mil screws and plain nuts um, replaces your your uh, rivets when you've uh, drilled them out and repaired it it's a very straightforward process uh, took me about 10 minutes on the other one so I'm gonna have a go at doing this one even quicker so I've got five screws five nuts these are just 22.5 mil 20 mil cap head screws I got from my local hardware place. Um, so the first thing you need to do is drill out the rivets. So this is two and a half mil drill bit. And what you'll feel is the actual rivet starts to turn after you've drilled into it a bit. And then you can see it's starting to pop out. In some cases they just go straight out. That was an easy one. Okay, there you go, they're all drilled out now. So that's your five, four of the five, that was the other one. There you go. That's good. Right. So I mean don't don't concern yourself with I mean obviously these are old seat belts. I mean some people might take the view that you shouldn't even be using them, but they work fine as far as I can tell, and they're you know they're still, they're not rusted, they're not falling apart, they're just, the electrical aspect isn't working. So once you've got them into the two halves, you don't need to do any more there. You've got some little white blocks here, you would need to remove one of those. And all you need to do that is a flat bladed, a flat bladed screwdriver. You just need to remove this plate, which is held in place by these two, two blocks here. You can also use the opportunity to clean away any gunk that's got in them over the years, bits of carpet, God knows what else. So all you need to do there is just gently prise that up. And you only need to do one. So once you've prised that up, it's not glued on or riveted or anything, it's just an interference bit. What you can then do is just lift this up and pull it out and look there you go there's a nice big piece of carpet exactly where the switch was or is for uh, for operating the 
um, seatbelt warning light. There's also what looks like a bit of Kit Kat wrapper, maybe. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's going to be old. So this is why these things get gummed up and don't work anymore. Now that might be enough. Now that I've done that, in fact, there's also a bit of tape here. I'm not even sure that's supposed to be in there, so I'm going to remove that. So I'm going to get in the way. There you go. So I would probably give these a good clean, blow them out of the nail line afterwards. So what you've got here is a little sprung piece there so you can see it sort of curves up and that's the bit that then gets pushed down by the seat belt now what I found on the other one and I don't necessarily believe it's going to be the case on this one I just think that bit of fluff is the culprit but what I found on the other one is that where this touches this bit here and you can just hopefully see that um, it just wasn't touching so it, it just needed to be pulled up a little bit and it worked so all I did was just gently push down on the opposite side to ensure that there was a contact, good solid contact. Now, let's just test that. So I'll put my multimeter back on again. And I think that should have hopefully just about done it. So all you need to do is just recheck. No, we've got nothing at the moment. Is that, is that on? Yeah. Okay, so let's just have a little look here. Okay, we've got a contact, but it doesn't seem to be very good. So I'm wondering whether the wires have actually come adrift, maybe, or if it's just dirt in the contact. Okay, they look all right. So what I'm going to do is get some contact cleaner. See, yeah, so if I put the screwdriver in there, I'm getting contact. So I think what it is, is a bit of, a bit of sandpaper between the contacts might just do it. So a little bit of 600 grit, wet and dry. And a bit of contact cleaner, which I hope is here somewhere. This is actually a bit more involved than the other one. Yeah, this one's cool. So I'm going to get a bit of contact cleaner in there. And then I'm going to get a bit of sandpaper. Just make a little strip. And then I'm going to use the screwdriver to push down the contact, slide the sandpaper in, and see if I can clean that up a bit. more bits of fluff you can see now why these things easily get blocked up so when I touch across the contacts like that it's fine but on their own okay I think this needs to bend down a bit further there you go right so it just needed to be bent down a bit more so this, this putting on this should disconnect it. Yeah, I'm just there's something underneath here. Still lots of gunky rubbish in here. 
bits of oily carpet, probably where somebody sprayed uh, WD-40 into it. I'm just going to take an airline to this. I'm back in a sec. The press has just been switched on, so that's going to take a minute, but um, yeah, it definitely looks like there's something between the contacts, and it's probably just a mixture of carpet and gunk, but it's quite difficult to get it, and I don't want to damage the connection between the two, um, so I'm wondering if there's any way I can get something in underneath it, maybe a, a little pick. So I've got a little angle pick here that I can get sort of between the two. Give a really good scrape. still though. Let's just put on the uh, connections here. Hopefully it should come on now. There you go. Right, so that's when the seat belt's out, the connection is there. When you put the seat belt in, it comes off, on, off, on, off, on. So that seems to have cleaned it up a bit, but I am going to give it a bit of blow with a bit of a blow with the airline. Uh, let's turn that off for a minute. And a bit more contact cleaner in there as well. See if we've got any air yet. now working. Um, what have we got going on here? Okay, quite happy with that. So now we need to put it back together, and that's really all there is to it. Um, you know, you can check the blades and the bits of the components within the, within the uh, thing. There's a little bit of surface rust, but nothing. It's just more kind of where I think it's just been sat around for a long number of years. So I would be quite happy that this is going to be functioning as it should. So I'm going to put this back in now. So you just slide that back in this way round. I think it's it like that. Like that. And then all you do is just return this block to whence it came from, which is just here. And it just slides down 
firmly over that and that stops that from falling back okay so that's basically now ready to go back together um, you've got the sort of spring mechanism here a couple of springs to operate within the casing there again all of that looks fine I can see a little bit of gunk in some of the bits and pieces there so um, what I will do is just give it all a little bit of a, a spray with some silicon lithium grease Okay, and then it's really just a case of putting that back on top and then holding it together while you replace the rivets with your nuts and bolts. So this goes together quite straightforward and these uh, screws go in so from the, the side that had the rivet head, you just push that through there. It's just a little nut. And at two and a half mil, these are the ideal sized, uh, the ideal size for this. So and the, uh, as you tighten it up, the nut actually kind of, sort of self locks itself into where the um, the end of the rivet used to go anyway, so that's easily enough done. Let's do one on the opposite corner. There we go. That one goes in there. Of five of these, Just run them all through, tighten up the, uh, the little nuts. I'm quite lucky to have a local hardware supplier that has this kind of stuff in stock, but obviously, easily ordered from Amazon 20 mil long, two and a half, it's all M2.5, should I say. Um, machine screws now these are cap head ones but there's also posi and you can go for zinc i've gone for a natural black look finish to them um, just so they're kind of not really noticeable really like the rivets were before them and once you've tightened all these up then really you're done but we will give it one last test and see if the seatbelt tongue is going to do its job switch it off So, so tighten them up until the nuts pull down flush into the case. Uh, these screws are slightly long, by about 1.5 mil. They stand proud. Now, what I will do to stop them from fouling against the other case on the other, because these sit basically side by side, butted up against each other, is I might well take the Dremel and just flatten off the uh, the ends of the screws where they come through the nuts. The nuts themselves are sunk down into where the rivets were so that's a nice clean finish to that so that's all back together uh, tightened up and it's only taken a few minutes to do and this one was actually a little bit more involved than the previous one the previous one just literally I just needed to bend down that top tab to push down on top of the contact below it where it had obviously just over the years um, got filled with rubbish and bent out of place. Right, so there you go. So if we connect the if we connect the connections uh, back up, we're looking for a tone when the seat belt is not buckled. Got a bit of a loose connection there. Right, so that's working. Put the buckle in, goes off, take the buckle out, goes on. Off, on, 
off, on. That's, that's working fine. I'm happy with that. So there you go. Seatbelt warning light working again.